Okay, so in this video we're going to cover stitching of, say, a panoramic image, for example. So we're going to go ahead and open the same folder we've been working with here on our desktop and open the TIFFs, which we processed previously. And we have 36 images here, which makes sense because we took four sets of nine bracketed images. So we're going to highlight all 36 of these. And I'll show you a couple of ways to do this. The first is to highlight them all and literally drag them right on top of that PT GUI icon in your dock. And I like to scroll over to the right here just to make sure all the images loaded, which they did. So that works well if you're on a, on a Mac and you're familiar or comfortable with that. So if you're not comfortable with that particular method or perhaps you're on a PC, I'll show you the traditional way to do this, which would be to open PT GUI as you normally would. And you can see we have the load images button there. We'll just click on that. And we've just navigate to our folder on our desktop here as we look for our images. We'll go ahead and open this up. There's our number one folder and our TIFF folder. So in this case we're going to go ahead and select all 36 of these images again. And once we've got those selected we're just going to click on the open button here at the bottom. So they're loading again. And we're going to scroll to the right here just to make sure they load it. And they sure did. So at this point what I like to do is click on the advanced tab. And this shows us all our options or all the tabs available across the top. And then we're going to go ahead and crop the image by clicking on this link right here. And I like to select a brighter exposure so I can see the uh, little more detail on the edges here. That looks pretty good. So we'll move this up just a hair and pull the bottom down and that looks pretty good we don't need to go crazy cropping here so to get back we click on the project assistant tab here at the top and we're gonna click on align images and this gives us a pop-up box and there's a few things going on here it tells us we have a bracketed set of images which we know and then it asks us if we want to use to link them um, which we do when we're using a tripod the top option and then it's also talking about exposure fusion and HDR so we're going to go ahead and select the top one because we did shoot from a tripod and in this case we are using exposure fusion so we're going to leave that um, we'll do HDR in another another video so uh, this takes a, a little bit for these images to align and of course uh, the more memory you have um, the faster the will go and processing speed I suppose. So here's a, a, a preview of the image so we'll just go back here to PT GUI and we can see our horizontal field view 181 which is pretty good uh, that'll make more sense as you play with the program. Um, we'll click on preview and I'm gonna make the uh, preview a little bigger than it defaults to in this case 2500 pixels wide and this takes um, quite a while for this to process so one of the things I, I just mentioned was memory and we'll talk about that again in just a little bit but this preview is done it's in QuickTime here so we'll go ahead and open up our our QuickTime preview and close a couple of these there we go and I like to just drag this window and make it uh, even bigger and this is our preview in QuickTime of our panorama stitched together so I just click and drag on this image and what I'm looking for are uh, bad stitches uh, places where it wasn't stitched well together um, particularly I look at uh, vertical or horizontal uh, lines and I always like to look at the floor as one of the places that uh, if you're going to find an error, you typically find one there. I didn't see any there. So we'll look at the ceiling. Same thing here. If you're going to have a, a, a bad stitch, this typically will appear either in the ceiling or down in the floor. And this looks pretty good, to be honest. I'm not seeing too much here. So zoom out a little bit. And I'm looking at this uh, where the TVs are mounted here looking at these lines looking for a break there I'm not seeing anything so it's looking pretty good so far again I'll look up here I'm not seeing too anything wrong look at the chairs so this is looking pretty good here 
I think uh, I think we got a winner. So we'll close that. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and, um, well, I'll show you this. One thing I do like to do, it's got a neat little feature, Optimize Now, and it optimizes for the uh, camera's response curve as well as the vignetting. And in this case, it didn't do anything on the vignetting, so I'll try that one more time. And that looks pretty good. Um, PT GUI's got more information on that, but for now, we're just going to move on. 8,000 pixels, I'm just going to... Um, round this off to 8000 select TIFF and then um, I'm gonna go to no compression and actually there's 8 bits here I am gonna leave it in 8 bits because we're doing exposure fusion for HDR you want to make that 16 and you have our LDR or low dynamic range options I'm gonna check blend planes and exposure fusion uh, preview exposure fuse panorama so we'll go ahead and select our folder to save it to and again I'm gonna create a new folder here and I'm gonna call that uh, stitched this is inside of our number one folder so we'll go ahead and save that so that tells us where we're saving it and I'm gonna go ahead and click create panorama now I mentioned a couple times already that uh, the more memory you have and the more processing speed or power you have, uh, the faster this will go. This particular process can take a while depending on your computer's uh, specifications. I've got a program that I use here and it's called um, Free Memory and it tells me how much memory I'm using. You can see here that it just dropped to 680 megabytes um, and now it's back up to 2 gigs. So the more memory you have, it, needless to say, the more processing power, the faster this process will go. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Come on. Come on. I promise. Oh, there we go. Okay. So now... You can see our memory went back to 4 gigs. It was all the way down to 680 while we were trying to stitch those. So we'll go ahead and uh, minimize this and close that. We've got all our images saved. We'll go uh, to our stitched folder that we made here just to check it out. And there they are. So we have 10 files here. Um, the This one here is a preview. Let's go to the first one. This is our brightest exposure and we call these blend planes or that's what PT GUI calls them so this is our brightest blend plane this is the next brightest blend plane and I'm looking at this area here and you can see it's getting darker and we're losing detail there and it's completely gone at that point and it's getting darker and darker and darker and as we get darker here though the one thing you will notice uh, I'll just skip to the darkest one here, is that the neon lights are exposed nearly perfectly, which is uh, part of the beauty of HDR and the whole process is um, exposing things that wouldn't normally come out in a standard or a single exposure. So our images have all been successfully stitched together, and we have nine different blend planes or exposure levels, which we're ready to now go ahead and process in Photomatics. Ooh.